Welcome to another edition of the magazine. Today we're here to talk about Fairhaven Unified Sports, and we have the liaisons for the Fairhaven Unified Sports here, uh, Karen Stoyak and Angela Allaire. Welcome to the show. Thank you. thank you. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. So a few years back, uh, Special Olympics International uh, gave Fairhaven High School a banner. What's that all about? This was a huge <laughs> accomplishment for Fairhaven High School. It's a lot of work. It's not just about the unified sports. You actually have to have a unified club. So Ms. Stoyak and I started a unified club. You have to have youth leadership. You have to have whole school engagement. So it's more than just athletics. It's about the whole dis or whole school um, showing the inclusivity all year long, not just during sports season. So that was a huge accomplishment for us and a big undertaking. Yes. No, I, um, she is the main one responsible for doing a lot of the paperwork, <laughs> submitting stuff. Um, we work really well together because, so she is the special ed teacher and I'm the phys ed teacher. But I see a lot of our regular ed kids. And with that, like I, I'm one of these, like I said, I live in Rhode Island and my commute being 50 minutes, I do a lot of thinking. <laughs> and my, I do a lot of thinking, like today I came in with another idea for something else and for fundraising and, you know, where we work very well together. So that whole undertaking of celebrating, you know, with an all school assembly and we celebrate Rock Your Socks. It's not just the sports, it's all other events. So it's, it was big. And I, we were, you know, we were like little kids getting a gold medal in the Olympics, like legit, <laughs> like we got this banner and it was huge for them to come present it to us. And for our assembly that day was, it was really big. And there's not a lot of schools in the Commonwealth that actually have earned it. Wow. So that was like a big thing. There were actually at the time only 23 schools. So to be recognized and we're such a small school. So to do something so big as a small school was, it meant the world to yeah. us. And I think it was very good for our whole entire community, not just Fairhaven High School. But to recognize the diversity and the inclusion yes. and the respect. And literally the whole school took part in the ceremony when it was presented to us. Um, and we had an athlete speak, we had a mentor speak, and one of our athletes like broke down and started crying and the, the whole crowd like started, we were getting, we were crying and her parents were here and it just was such an emotional experience for us too. And to see the whole school take part in that activity and to see us getting this banner, you know, we, we they say we bleed blue around here, but with that, I was like, it's red and that's <laughs> up there for a reason. So we earned it. It was it was very well deserved. And after we the Special Olympics of Massachusetts came and presented it to us, we did a faculty versus the unified basketball team event. Okay. And the staff really gets into it. The cheering and the crowd is amazing. So like Karen said, it's a whole school wide event and that is huge. And in fact, we actually did a police versus fire police and fire versus the unified Five team teams. last year. Nice. And we um, collected for gifts to give because mm -hmm. the gentleman there has been great with my kids volunteering there. So we did a fundraiser for that and the turnout was unbelievable. And the amount of donations we got were amazing. So we are also trying to make it so our kids give back to the community too. Great. So it's not just about us and what we're doing, it's about what else can we do within our community and our school. So we have one plan too. We just we're going by a jamboree schedule, so we're kind of waiting, but we already have the next thing that we're giving towards this year. It's oh, not going to be the same charity of, we'll, do, we'll pick something different. Oh, that's great. So, but she does, she'll pick the, the, she'll pick the charity. <laughs> the charity we will do this year will be the Fairhaven Animal Shelter because Terry Cripps is amazing and has let my students volunteer there throughout the years. And in fact, I have a current student athlete who is volunteering there. So we want to give back, again, something within our community. That's great. I know he'll be very grateful for that also. And he likes playing in the game. <laughs> yes. And I think they brought the dog. Didn't the police bring their, they were going to bring the dog. Yes. So, Blue. Yeah. 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 Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. So how did Fairhaven Unified Sports come about? So about five years ago, um, Chris Garrig, who was our athletic director at the time, came to us and he had said, oh, I have this idea. I would love to run by you guys. He said other schools in the town, or and not in the town, other schools in the state are um, participating in unified sports. What do you guys think? And her and I immediately were like, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. So 
I'm going to admit, I'm not very athletic, but just the idea <laughs> of the kids being able to participate, because our number one goal is we, I want my students to have the same exact opportunities other, as every other kid, kid in yep. this building has. Yes. And this was going to give them that opportunity. So we started basketball five years ago. Yep. Okay. And we started track three years ago. Yep. So, um, and then we actually do strength and conditioning in the winter, and this will be our I was going to say, is third, third year? Yeah, third year doing that. that. So we actually do things for three seasons. The strength and conditioning is done during the school day, and then you submit everything to SOMA. So it's not seen in the public, but it's really helped our kids because a lot of the athletes do weight training. Okay. So our kids do the strength and conditioning. They do it in, so, in class. So the first year that we started this, um, you know, we had the, the students, the that we knew were like, okay, they're going to take part in the basketball. And then I kind of hand selected the mentors who are um, on the court with them. Okay. And because I teach regular ed for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm almost like a little, I'm very select of, I, I'm very picky of who I choose okay. because I know which kids are doing it for the right reasons. And I see their heart and why they're doing, you know, why they would want to choose this. And I think our first year, we knocked it out of the park with like the kids that did it. Um, they just, there's some of them are still in touch with those kids and some have graduated and they've moved on and they're still in touch with them. We're still in touch with a few of those kids too. Um, one came back for one of our, our recent games and he was like, Oh my God, this is great. I remember this. And you know, that's, that's what it's about, you know? And in fact, two of them ended up going to school for special ed. Oh, yep. that's so great. that's huge. They will be graduating this June. And then when we did our day of Special Olympics at Dartmouth last year, four oh yeah former, former mentors, mentors came in oh, yep, to cheer great. them all on. So, so, so that is huge to me seeing the impact. Yes. The impact isn't just on the athletes, it's on the mentors also. Yeah, sure. And like I said, for these kids to be seniors in college and coming back to visit our kids yeah. and emailing us and asking how they are and stopping during Thanksgiving to see how they're doing. Oh, yep. that's great. That to me and to both of yeah. us is what it's all about. Yeah, that's great. You know, one of them, she would fa we would FaceTime and then all of a sudden, you know, you the kids would come up and they're like, oh my God, hi. And it's, it's that connection. It's, you know, that's building relationships and that's a lifelong thing. It's not just, you know, oh, we won, you know, this, this. It's, it's a lot of times I've been like, it's, that's what it's about. It's right. That's what makes it special we don't want to us. It just to be about the game. Like, did we win this game? Did we lose this game? Yeah. That's not what we wanted to be about. And at our games, the best thing that we love is, is when the mentors come down and they're high fiving the athletes and everybody's high fiving. And then I just found out today that they actually all have a group text going. Oh, wow. So last night after our loss, one of the mentors actually sent a wonderful text yep. to the group, you know, saying, don't let this. Um, bring you down. We're a group. We're going to get over this. Yeah. I almost cried when I read it because it was so amazing. And again, that's what it's about. It's about that impact mm -hmm. off the court, not just on the court. Mm -hmm. A lifelong impact. Yeah. Yes. So you mentioned police and fire that they played against uh, the team. Yep. And you mentioned the faculty. But what other teams do they play against? So we play, we have played a Okay. We have played um, Bourne. Seekonk. Seekonk. This year, well, Old Rochester. Yeah, we're playing them again next week. Swansea, and actually, the one really nice thing is, is at the, to end the season, we actually go to a jamboree, jamboree. Okay. and it's typically held at Dartmouth High School, and it's like a round robin event. So you're playing different teams. They have three courts going, and the different teams are playing at different times. So that is amazing, just because we actually don't even know who we're playing until we get there, and they assign us a court. Sure. And then we get to see all the kids that we've played all Against. year long. So it really is great. And like, you'll see some of them coming up to each other, like the athletes coming up to each other and like giving high fives and hugs. And then you'll see kids from those teams coming and watching when they're, they have a bye, they'll come and watch us. And then we, you'll, our kids will yeah. go watch the other teams. So it's really a great way to end the season. That is great. But a lot of, I, like I said, my daughters, they both played sports in Rhode Island and they do a jamboree at the beginning of the season where you get a quick half hour to kind of see how teams are. We do it at the end. Games don't count towards anything, but it doesn't matter. It's just like a fun afternoon. And I had said our season is supposed to end next Wednesday, but it really doesn't because we have the jamboree, which is fun, the faculty game, and then we have the police and fire. So it's where it's nice to kind of extend it. Sure. We keep hanging on to them a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. So this all started great, great program uh, about five years ago, you said? 
And then we had COVID. Mm -hmm. How did COVID affect uh, Unified for Hearing Sports? So I was extremely lucky because my kids came to school full time during COVID. Okay. So when the mentors were coming every other week, I had mine. But the tricky part for that was the mentors were only here every other mm -hmm. week. Okay. So that was very difficult. The other thing that was difficult is some of my kids have sensory issues. So having to wear the masks. masks. Yeah. Not, and then the unity of being able to high five. You we couldn't, couldn't touch. Do any of the high fives. Yeah. At the end of the games, we couldn't go by. Well, we could go by the Elbow. other team with elbows only. Mm -hmm. um, when we sat on the bus, we couldn't sit partners in the, in the seats on the bus. They each had their own. We, we put markers and each kid had their own basketball number. Okay. So I had a list of what their name was and what number basketball. Even though during game, but during practice, they could only use their own because they didn't want anybody contacting. It was, it was very, very tricky. It was very difficult, too, because the whole point of Unified is unity. Yeah. And then when COVID hit, it was like, okay, now everybody needs to be away from By each them, other. Yeah. And you couldn't have that unity like you have now. So it ended up being only through social media and texting and things like that. So we missed it. And the kids, my kids, the athletes, miss not seeing the mentors every week mm -hmm. and only seeing them every other week. So that was, that was, we made it through, but it was a difficult time. It was. A lot of hand sanitizer, too. Because anytime they touched anything, we were going through it like, okay, wash your hands. Because we were just following the rules. Right. I know for me as a phys ed teacher, I was told during my classes, you couldn't, you know, they, their respiratory rate couldn't go up. I'm like, oh, okay. And we're wearing masks. So we couldn't run. We were walking. And it was it was a challenge. Right, right. So, you know, knock on wood that we don't have to, you know, hopefully we don't go through, through that again. So what's it like now? You got through that difficult time. So what's it like now? It's back to the way it was and it should be. Yeah. Um, I feel like the one good thing about COVID was the social media piece because five years ago, we didn't have team Zoom group text mm -hmm. like we do now. So that was the one good thing is, is that did bring about more of that social media and the kids connecting through that. Um, so that was, I will say that was a positive of it. Yep. Um, so now we have that again. And just the interactions in the hall, um, as Here's, it seems like a lot of my kids sit together at lunch and then senior year, they, the seniors get to sit in the senior cafeteria and that scares me because I'm like, oh, who's going to watch out for them? But I shouldn't be worried <laughs> because I walk by and they're at tables with the most popular kids eating yeah. and socializing and everything's great and I realize I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> I would go in to talk to a lot of the regular kids and I'd be like, hey, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden they slowly started, you know, either inviting them to their table or a couple would go to theirs. Um, just seeing that connection. It's, I just feel like it's become, you know, seeing kids in the hallway. I do an open gym at seven o'clock in the morning and I have a couple of the athletes that are in here and they're playing basketball with other kids that actually are not, you know, they, they're having fun and they're exercising and, you know, same thing, giving high fives and it doesn't matter. They're all part of Fairhaven High School. It's, there's no... You know, they're not like, oh, you're on the unified team. It doesn't matter. It's just practice. One of the, another amazing thing is this. So five years ago, we also started the Day of Special Olympics held at mm -hmm. Dartmouth. And I cry every every time we do it. <laughs> so um, they actually, the whole school goes out into the hallway and we have a send off. Oh, wow. So the kids walk. The, they don't, they at the posters. first year, they didn't know. So we kept them in the basement and then we guided them up a certain way and every hallway was lined. Wow. The whole school and they were cheering, they had posters. So they played, you know, they made an announcement and then we came through. It was like the band was included, the cheerleaders. Wow. Um, it was amazing, giving high fives. And the kids at that first year, they didn't expect it. I kind of was like, they did that in my high school and I it was so memorable that I was like, they need to do something like that. That's something the kids will never ever forget. Never. You know, we took pictures and then actually, you know, like just to to drive, the, the kids were so pumped. Like it was so exciting. And like she said, we were crying. We're in the back, like, you know, we, we're not the highlights. We are literally, we're in the back, like, okay. <laughs> we, we don't stay, we don't like to be in the limelight. They, we want them to do it, not us. And one of the best things was even last year, we had kids, actually it was the year after COVID, kids came to us and would say, are we doing that Special Olympics thing again? <laughs> so, and not my kids, I'm talking the mentors yeah, team, kids. and yeah. we're asking, can we do that again now that COVID's over? Mm -hmm. So that was awesome that it wasn't just us who loved it. Yeah, it was the, the kids. mentors as well. And like when she was saying about making posters, we didn't even know that kids 
made posters to hang in the hallway yeah. and to hold in the hallway. So when we walked out and I saw that they had gone on their own yeah. time making posters, it was just so amazing. And like I said, the send off five years, it just keeps getting better yeah. and better and better. Um, that first year for Special Olympics, they all got medals. Okay. And we went to the, we chaperoned the prom and they all brought them. They wore them to the prom and we had them announced because it was at prom day. It was, it was the day the of the prom. prom. So we finished Special Olympics, went home, changed, went to the prom. And then we didn't get, we didn't go out there. They all announced, they announced them onto the dance floor and oh, they wow. came, everyone was cheering for them. It was, that's that camaraderie that it's, you can't. And it wasn't even us who made that suggestion. Yeah. It was actually the class, of, senior class advisors yep. asked if they could have the kids announced. Yep. So again, another crying moment for us <laughs> because we didn't expect that. Yeah, so, that was nice. And the kids will wear their medals all the time. They yep. love it. And then um, last year, we actually sold unified track and field shirts, not as a fundraiser, but just sold it to any faculty or staff who wanted to buy them just to sh show support. We probably sold about 25. Mm -hmm. This year for our fundraiser, we sold, are selling unified um, t-shirts. T-shirts. It's just as fave even unified. I actually called to get a quote. Well, and there's a I quote said, on the back, though. Yes. <laughs> and, and I actually called to get a quote, and I said, oh, we'll probably sell about 50. We sold 188 shirts. That's great. So That's great. the fact that just showing even from last year to this year, the amount of growth. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does have a quote. So the quote on the back says, diversity is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked, asked to, to dance. dance. I like that. That's very nice. Very nice. I can see why you sold 188 of them. Yeah. <laughs> and probably more to come. Well, yes. we ordered a few extras just in case. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. 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 So you both started the a unified club. Is that part of the social media that you were talking about? Or what is a unified club? So the unified club, so not every kid loves athletics. So the unified club is a way for our kids to get together and um, do crafts. We, we play cook, bingo. We play bingo. We did a scavenger hunt. Um, we do a variety of activities. Yeah. So <laughs> we started it and we expected a small group and we had about 34 <laughs> kids sign up. Okay. Which was way bigger than we expected. Yeah. So it's awesome because when the kids get together, so we meet on Tuesdays in my room and sometimes we have to go to the large cafeteria, cafeteria because it yeah. gets biz busy. But so they'll partner up and they will make a craft. Or like um, last year at Easter, we did a little um, cooking activity yep. with like this nest. And so it's awesome because the kids get to know them more than just sports. Because obviously when we're playing sports, we're always talking about basketball or track. Yep. So when they're downstairs and we're working on different things, they could say, hey, what's your favorite color? Do you have plans for the weekend? <laughs> yeah. uh, what'd you do over the break? So it's just a time for them to connect where it's not non -athletic. necessarily yes. about athletics. Mm -hmm. And again, we get more kids because a lot of kids can't be mentors on our teams because they're involved in other sports. Because this is just one day a week, they can come and go to their sport after. Yeah. Okay. So it involves a lot more kids. Sure. So um, we feel like it's been a huge success. Yep. yep. And in fact, like I said, the first week we photocopied like 15 things, the first meeting, oh, and yeah, then all of a sudden 34 kids show up and we're like, <laughs> uh, we don't have enough stuff. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> Um, but another, it's really, it's no, really, it's been really a good, good seeing the kids like just playing bingo. You know, if, if they can't help, if they can't figure it out, the other kids are helping them. Sure. You know, I was, we were saying we went to Chick fil A after our, this has nothing to do with the Unified Club, but <laughs> at basketball last week, we got permission to go to Chick fil A and watching the mentors helping the athletes at the cash register and with their money. And that's, just helping each other out. That's it's huge. So huge. That and is. that's that what they do. Asked. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't even ask. ask. Um, and then the other thing with the Unified Club is, is we actually will be having a table at our holiday fair okay. at Haven High on November 18th from 10 to 3. <laughs> um, so the kids will be making crafts okay. and they will actually be selling them with one of the um, mentors. All right. So that's really good because they get to have those social interactions. They get to have the peer interactions. Mm -hmm. They work on money when they're selling the, the right. Um, right. craft. And it's a way that they get to do something that everybody else does. Do. Exactly. So it shouldn't just be about us fundraising. It really should be the kids fundraising. Sure, yeah. So this will be a fundraiser. The kids love having their unified gear, but I say, hey, we've got to raise money for it. Yep. So it's a great way. And again, being part of the community. That's our number one goal. Be part of the community. And this they'll be here just like everybody else. Yep. That's November 18th. November 18th. Right here in the gym. 
Yes, I yes. think so. And I would actually like to give a shout out to our PTO because they actually donated the table to okay. the Unified Club, whereas most vendors have to pay for it. So, um, again, getting other people to help us out. It, it just, I just can't even say enough about what it means to us to have it not just be, it's not about us. It's yeah. not about us and just the kids. It's yeah. about the whole, whole community. community. Yeah. And so every time somebody does something like that, um, the PTO actually was able to secure um, booths at a, the stadium for concerts this oh, year. Wow. Mm-hmm. And they were given six and they actually offered one to Unified Sports. So as another way for us to raise funds. So that was another thing. So again, people are, it's getting out there that, hey, there's not just all these other sports. sports. There's Unified too. And getting funding for that. And um, actually, we went to, I went to school committee uh, last year. I had parents come. I had athletes come. I actually had a parent who couldn't come, but he presented something that I presented. Um, The athletes spoke. And mm-hmm. we were able to get the funding for unified jerseys. Okay. Uniforms. Yep. Uniforms. Yep. Yes. Which was for both track and field and basketball. Mm-hmm. Because we would go to other schools and they would have them. And honestly, we just had the leftovers. Yeah. And I don't blame anybody. It was the best that we could get. But now we have our oh, own. And the yeah. kids are so proud. Yep. To wear them and have them yep. be their own uniform. Game day. Brand new to them. Yeah. And game day, they wear them. And to school, like other kids do. So they're part of, that's, you know. Just part of the culture now. Yeah. And that's a huge thing is just having it be part of the culture. Um, December 3rd is actually International Persons with Disability Day. Okay. So a Special Olympics of Massachusetts came down last week, last week. And we have a big banner saying, I pledge to spread inclusion. And it gives ideas how. Nice. And we will hang it in the cafeteria and have people sign, sign it. it. Oh, and great. we'll have it on the announcements. So, again, I just feel like it's not just about the small group that we work with for the for the unified club, for unified track, and for unified yep, basketball. basketball. It's about the whole school and, and the buy-in from the whole school and the willingness of what everybody in this building is willing to do. I just feel like yeah. we are extremely lucky, and I know we're extremely lucky because we went to a conference two weeks ago for Special Olympics, and... We have a lot of mentors and other schools within the Commonwealth were coming and saying, how do you, how do you get, get so, them? so many mentors? Yep. And what do you do for fundraising? And how do you guys get jerseys? Wow. So, and actually the lady from Special Olympics, Denise Larrabee, but she was here on Friday. She said, I might need you guys to speak because you guys got it down. <laughs> not, I'm not saying that we got it down, but yeah. she thinks, she we, got thinks it down, we have it down. Yeah. Um, to be able to help <laughs> yeah. other people in other schools yes. within the Commonwealth, which is great. Like. I feel so. so happy we do. That it's, we have but that. that's the community too. Like you're when everybody's at the games and everyone's cheering everyone on. It's not you're not just cheering for your own team. When other kids get baskets, you're cheering track meets. It's the same thing. You are cheering for everyone. And at this conference, everyone's just sharing ideas. Like we were saying, we did the game against the police and fire. Oh my God, that's a great idea. Oh, we should do that. You have a you know you have a school resource officer. Use that. We donate. Oh my God, what a great. And so it's just nice to like it's it's. You're not competitive. Like some schools are so competitive against other schools. We're like sharing ideas, which is, I would rather have that. I'd rather, and I would rather coach this all day, any day <laughs> than dealing with the other stuff. You know, we leave it just yesterday. You know, we didn't, we weren't as successful, but they got off the bus. They were fine going off and doing their thing. It, it's not like it weighs on them. They're just, hey, we tried hard. We did well, done. <laughs> well, Superintendent Kohler put in her Fairhaven report, a whole section on unified sports. So town-wide and uh, this gets played also in New Bedford so New Bedford gets to see you know about what we're doing here in Fairhaven too so maybe they'll have something similar or they'll uh, start something similar and they'll contact you to get that information and uh, and whoever sees this they'll probably contact you to get that information like at your conference so that was great excellent that's great so what's the future for uh, Fairhaven Unified Sports um, at the SOMA conference, there was, an, there was actually <laughs> somebody presented and they do power lifting in the winter. I'm like, all right, I wouldn't do that, but maybe somebody <laughs> else would volunteer to coach that. Um, one of our um, administrators offered to do drumming with the kids in the winter, okay. literally a drumming club. So maybe kids who have musical talent or would like to, they can do that. Um, I, I have a lot of senior mentors that help out 
and their biggest regret is they do it senior year. And they're like, I can't believe I didn't do this sure. earlier. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping, my dream is to get them when they're younger so that kids grow with our athletes. Sure. And you get that bond lasts longer. Because the kids who have been on the team the longest, the mentors, they have that connection and they know them. And we can, you know, we can rely on them a little bit you know, better than some of the other kids that we don't know as well. And my goal isn't even about Fairhaven High. My goal is about Fairhaven Public Schools. Sure. So when we started going to the Day of Special Olympics, we had invited the middle school and they came. And then I actually invited the other elementary schools in our district and one school came and the other didn't. And then I'm like, I am not giving up on this. And last year I sent out an, um, an email to all of them again and it was the first year that every school in our district attended the Day of Special Olympics. Wow. Yep. So um, my goal is for our whole school, our whole district to have this. So actually that poster I was talking about, sure. I contacted Soma and I was like, hey, Denise, can I get four posters? And she said, mm, Angie, we only usually get one per <laughs> district, but for all Fairhaven does, I'll give you four. <laughs> yeah, wow. And she came down and she gave me four. So I emailed all of the principals so, yeah. and sent them out yesterday. So I have the vision of, I want this to be a district-wide incentive. And I think what, like Karen said, I think that what happens is the kids get here and they don't know enough about it until it's their senior year. I want this started when they're yeah, young. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the other things that Fairhaven High School did is we started a unified phys ed class. Okay. So as you know, um, high school phys ed mm -hmm. can be very competitive and very dangerous. And sometimes I have kids who I fear for, for unify or for um, yeah. general phys ed. For in their safety. Their safety. Yep. So we started a unified phys ed class, which is actually part of the rec condition for the banner, because that is something they want to have happen. So now when my kids come in here, they're just like everybody else yep. participating in all these sports that Miss Stack yep. has come up with without having to worry about getting spiked by a volleyball yep. or getting knocked over by somebody who's being very aggressive in, in basketball. So instead of like blending into the woodwork, they are the standouts during Unified. Mm -hmm. And so that is awesome. So I, my goal is I would love to see Unified Phys Ed at the middle school level. And I would love to see some of the mentorships and partnerships that we have at the high school happening at the lower levels. And I actually um, have been in contact with one of the principals and she would like to see that too. So my ultimate goal is for this to be district-wide, not just here. Well, I think you're gonna accomplish that goal. <laughs> I hope so. I can't thank you both enough. This is definitely my mission and vision in my, my career also. So what you're doing here on this level and to the higher level is really creating uh, a good solid future uh, for you know diversity and inclusion. So True. I can't thank you both enough. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. With Unified Fairhaven Sports and uh, thank you Karen and Angela. Thank you so much for uh, everything you do for our community and for our students. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you.